Welcome to the Natural Health Podcast, where we bring awareness of sustainable health in the business hustle space. The Natural Health Podcast is perfect for the high-performing, business-minded individuals who want to work with their biochemistry to achieve optimal health. That's right. Welcome. I want to start off with a few questions for yourself. Do you eat takeaway food once, twice, three times a week? Every single day, every lunch, do you eat takeaway? But what I mean by takeaway, I mean fast food, right? Do you indulge in fast food or do you just have it every single day and it's just become a totally norm to you? But have you ever noticed any effects that it does on your body, in particular your brain? That is right. That's exactly what I'm going to be talking about today. I'm going to be talking about how this fast food affects your brain. So I want to go into Number one, what is fast food? Number two, what happens to your brain on fast food? And then, of course, to finish it off, I'm going to give you three tips to avoid fast food affecting your brain health. Let's get into it. It's Mondays with Mahela. That's right, me. Thank you so much for tuning in. I absolutely love, love, love and appreciate your support. For any of you who don't know me, I'm a qualified naturopath, absolutely passionate about all things health, business and overall success in both of them. I'm here today on Mondays with Mahela to provide you with simple savvy and sustainable health hacks to optimize your health. And in today's topic in particular, I'm going to be talking about fast food and how it affects your brain, right? I mean, look, we all have fast food here and there, and I mean, we've all had it in our life, but little do we actually know how it affects our brain health, right? Sometimes you may feel a bit sluggish after you eat fast food. Sometimes you might feel energized. Sometimes you might feel bloated and so forth, but I don't think a lot of us have actually sat down and thought about how it affects our brain, right? But before we get into the hot topic of our brain health, let's define and let's look at what is fast food, right? Everyone talks about fast food and, but let's get into it. Let's just get a little bit of an understanding of what it is, right? The one thing that I wanted to point out is, I strongly believe that we underestimate how much fast food we actually intake, right? Which is quite interesting because if you're actually sitting down now, think about, how much fast food did you have this week, right? And you're gonna know what fast food means after this episode, right? So the term fast food generally refers to the food that people intend to consume quickly, either there or take away. So plenty of research and evidence demonstrate the various negative health effects of eating and also, of course, overeating um, this fast food, right? The interesting fact is I wanted to get some statistics out. So I went to the Australian Borough Statistics, right? So the ABS said, House Call Expenditure Survey looked into it, the trend away from home cooking towards meals out and fast foods has continued to increase in the years, right? According to this graph right here. The share of meals out and fast food in total expenditure increased from 25% in 1988 to 1998, sorry, 89, to 31% in 2009 and 10. Imagine what it is now. That was 10 years ago, right? And increased to 34% in 2015 and 16. So 34% it was in 2015, 16. That was five years ago. I wonder if it's hit the 40% or so. Because when you think about it, I know a lot of people, I know myself sometimes eat out, right? Because we're so busy. We've got so many things going on in life that takeaway food has just become the norm. Back in the days, in the 80s, I believe, when it was only 25%, it was kind of like, you know, weekends and that was it or something, um, an event or something along those lines. But now it's kind of like an everyday because mum, dad, whoever is looking after individuals is busy, right? They're busy. The family household is busy. So therefore, fast food, takeaway food has dramatically increased, right? So, The interesting thing is, is according to the Food Institute analysis of data from Bureau of Labor Statistics, millennials alone spend 45% of their budget 
food dollars on eating out. So this shows us that the millennials out there, <laughs> they are spending nearly half of their income on eating out. That is absolutely crazy, right? So in comparison to 40 years ago, the average American family now spends half their food budget on restaurant foods, right? This is crazy. It's a lot of money being spent on food. But why are we doing this? And what is this actually doing to our health, right? What I want you to know is that these fast food meals are known to have added sugar, right? Most of these fast foods or fast food overall is known to have sugar, but it's known to have added sugar. But not only does it have the extra calories added to it, it has absolutely little nutrition, right? So many fast foods alone, um, what happens is they 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 had so so one one soda let's look at it contained eight teaspoons of sugar right which is 140 calories right 38 grams of sugar and nothing else so there's no nutrition added there right so if you're having a fast food and then you're having a soda with it there goes 140 calories 38 grams of sugar and that's absolutely it. no zinc no b vitamins no vitamin c anything along those lines no minerals just pure sugar and calories right in addition to that, a lot of fast foods have trans fats, right? I mean, no amount of trans fats is considered to be safe or healthy. So think about it. So you're taking something in that's absolutely not doing anything besides damage to your body, right? In addition to that, there's a there's a study that I want to look at. People eating out restaurants, they associate it as healthy, still underestimated the number of calories in their meal, but 20%. I know I'm not all about calories. Calories are not the end all, but this is just showing that even when we eat out at fast food, we actually may overeat, right? So fast food is typically very poor in its nutrition, right? According to a study paper in the Journal of Health Promotion Perspectives, fast foods tends to contain various substances that are generally unhealthy, high in sugar, salt, and saturated or trans fats, as well as processed preservatives and ingredients. It also is very, very low in beneficial nutrition. So when we look at a fast food, so we think about pizza, we think about burgers, we think about anything along those lines, right? If we actually understood what was in those like what the ingredients list was we would probably be in shock because most of these will be preservatives additives that or food colorings that we don't need that actually places absolute no benefit to us and if we cooked at home we would be we wouldn't be adding these preservatives because the food is freshly cooked right there and we're going to eat it right now right there right so think about the fast food, what that means to you and how much fast food you have taken in last following week. So let's get into the exciting, exciting part of this podcast is what happens to your brain on fast food, right? So now you've thought about it and you've said, okay, Mahayla, I've actually had four fast foods in the last week, right? Four meals out of whatsoever meals have been fast foods, right? But what does that mean to your brain? Well, let's start off with actually McDonald's, right? I know, exciting, right? <laughs> and it attracts a lot of us to it. But why do we get attracted to McDonald's? Well, have you ever thought about why they chose those golden arches? Well, and the red color. It should come absolutely, absolutely no surprise that there was so much research done behind that, right? Because they did research because this color red and yellow combined together triggers hunger cravings. So when you see that, you're going to be like, oh, I'm hungry. Oh, let's just stop at McDonald's, right? So research published in a journal Psychology Today states that Pavo was able to get a dog to salivate at the sound of a bell. If you know that research study, McDonald's gets your appetite flowing with a chemical dopamine release anytime you hear their jingle or see their logo, right? It turns out that the consistent braining created a strong brain reaction. So, so all the individuals that may be listening and know anything about marketing or branding, they are like the star, the golden star of marketing, right? 
So that means when when the logo or your favorite fast food restaurant appears, a dopamine cue activates in anticipation of the reward and pleasure to follow, which essentially is that happy meal, right? So that is so, so interesting. But I wanted to look at what actually happens to the brain. So now that we're like, oh my gosh, we, we see that, you know, McDonald's sign, we get that dopamine rush, we get that salivation, we get that hunger cue. But what happens then when we actually ingest that food, right? Animal work over the last three decades has generated a convincing body of evidence that a Western diet, one high in saturated fat and refined carbohydrates can damage various brain systems. So I'm not only just talking here about fast food, but fast food in particular has is high in saturated fat and refined carbohydrates. And this is saying that can occur damage, right? Also, a study in the Journal of Appetite suggests that there is a casual link between a high saturated fat and simple carbohydrate diet typical to a fast food diet right and a lower capacity of memory and learning this sort of diet may also rise the risk of alzheimer's and parkinson's disease this is mind-blowing right so we're all looking for the cure of you know parkinson's or alzheimer's disease but you know what Maybe the cure is to remove things in your life, not to add things into your life. I also want to put out there, like I said, you know, fast food is high in saturated fat and carbohydrates. So what happens is it impacts the cognition and damage associated with brain areas. It's been linked, right? This study shows it right here. It also uh, causes damage via several established mechanisms. The diet also seems to contribute to onset of neurodegenerative diseases, right? But let's get into specifics, right? So the one that I want to talk about is depression, right? A lot of individuals here in Australia and all around the world, unfortunately, suffer from depression. When we're depressed, I don't know if you've ever been depressed, but you don't feel like doing anything. And the last thing you really want to do is get cooking. Get in. Actually, the last thing you want to do is go to the shops, get the groceries and get cooking. But then even before that, the last thing you want to do is even think about that. So now we have this thing called a phone and an app and we can order any fast food to our door. So when we're depressed, that kind of seems like the right thing to do. But Canadian research from the University of Montreal found that consuming diets high in sugar and fat increases the rate of depression. So you're depressed, but then you're getting your fast food and you're going to be even depressed more, right? When study researchers fed mice a diet high in fat, which was 58% of fat, and sugar over the six-week period, they found that the rats showed signs of increased depression and increased anxiety once fatty foods were taken away from them. So it's interesting because this didn't happen when they were, but it was when it was taken away from them, right? These mice were compared to mice fed on a low-fat, lean diet with only 11% of calories from fat, the scientists concluded that consuming a high fat and sugar diet altered the chemical activity in the brain, specific levels of corticosteroids, a stress hormone, and CREB, a dopamine functioning protein that causes addictive feelings and behaviors. This significantly increased and created a poor cycle of eating, right? People who eat fast food and processed pastries are 51% more likely to develop depression than those who don't eat those foods or a very low portion of them. So this was just two two studies that I researched and I came up. There were so many more, but I had to shorten it up a little bit because I got excited and I was like, oh my God, so many studies, right? But the thing, the key line here that I want you to understand is, is the fact that there's a higher chance of you getting depression if you're eating fast food. So if you're already depressed, imagine what that might be doing to your brain. So think about next time you may be feeling depressed and wanting some fast food. How about a home cooked meal where you actually know what's inside of it? The other thing is, is a lot of individuals, especially kids um, and young youth and adults, you know, have a hyperactivity and anxiety, right? And I know when you're anxious, the last thing you want to do and hyperactive, the last thing you want to do is cook, right? So the jury is still debatable on sugar and its influence on anxiety and hyperactivity. However, a study published in a journal of clinical pediatrics for kids established that feeding children high, foods high in preservatives and artificial colors and preservatives raises the risk of clinical hyperactivity. So not just hyperactivity, but clinical hyperactivity. So it's been, it's been determined and they've been actually diagnosed with it. And what's in fast food? 
preservatives, artificial colors, and flavorings, and so forth, right? The same study published in 2012 by the National Institute of Health took a sample of 800 hyperactivity children and found that 150 displayed decreased irritability during sleep disturbances and restlessness when artificial food colorings and preservatives were eliminated from their diet, right? That is amazing because I can just imagine the carers, mums, parents out there for these children who are irritable and hyperactive and then this is an answer for them, not not adding medication in no one is deficient in adhd medication they're deficient in minerals and nutrients right and the thing that i also wanted to say is these artificial foods flavorings and colorings actually deplete nutrients right so they're not adding anything in to your for your body to function the way it's supposed to be it's actually depleting it the other thing is also additional research published in a journal of psychology today states that diets low in healthy omega-3 fatty acids and high in refund carbohydrates fast food, right, altered anxiety levels. The research concluded by Dr. Emily Deans, a board-certified psychiatrist from Manischewitz, found that blood sugar fluctuations, so the, the rise and the fall in blood sugar, which is what happens with fast food, significantly increased levels of fatigue, moodiness, and anxiety. So that just shows to us that if we're taking in fast food, right, three, four times a week, the chances of our blood sugar levels going up and down rises, which means then even if you're eating a home cooked meal, there is a higher chance of your blood sugar level fluctuating, which means you may end up with anxiety, irritability, hyperactivity, fatigue, and so forth, right? The other one that I wanted to talk about is compulsive eating. So how fast food affects our brain may be compulsive eating, right? So Research Institute, an American nonprofit biomedical research facility, studied the compulsive eating habits in a group of lab rats that were fed stimulated fat and sugar-laden foods, fast food, right? The scientists characterized the obsessive overeating as similar to a drug addiction to narcotics such as morphine and cocaine. So I don't know if you've ever gone, well, you probably have eaten fast food. You kind of feel like getting more, don't you? You have a little bit and you're like, I'm going to have a little bit more. I have one burger, two burger. Oh, I'll just stuff it. You know what? I'm just going to have the third burger. So you, you tend to overeat that fast food, but it's not giving you any nutrients. It's actually depleting, depleting you of nutrients. So you're overeating, depleting yourself of nutrients, giving yourself an ability to get depression and anxiety and compulsive eating. Right. So a similar study concluded by a group of researchers at London Con Constitutes based college reported that um, rats brains displayed higher rates of activation in pleasure centers after eating cream filled cookies versus taking recreational drugs. That is mind blowing. So yes, your kids, <laughs> yes, you or your kids are not on drugs, but you may be on fast food. So kind of this is kind of saying the same thing i'm not saying it's the same thing but this study is kind of saying the pleasure centers in your brain activated were were um yeah were high right so it displayed higher rates displayed higher rates of activation of pleasure centers such as your nucleus and modus spectrum palladium and hypothalamus after eating cream filled cookies versus taking recreational drugs that blows my mind, right? So you may be like, I'm not taking drugs, but you may be overeating or you may be having fast food. Your brain doesn't really know the difference, okay? The other one that I wanted to talk about, which I've seen a lot recently, and that is a dull creative enjoyment. I see a lot of individuals walking down the streets and they're just meh. They're just going through life without any joy, any excitement, right? But can fast food be doing that to you? Right. Research from the University of Toronto found that the fastest way to tap into your artistic side is to lay off your fast food. So if you have a job, or if you want to be a little bit more creative, fast food is not going to help, right? When the study monitored influenced fast food logos and restaurants on the artist taste of participants, exposure was shown to increase impatience and need for instant gratifications whilst dulling the overall appreciation of music, photography, opera, nature, and art. Oh my gosh. So researchers drew the conclusion that exposure to fast food signs and commercial embedded the ability to savior pleasurable experiences in lieu of instant gratification. When study participants were offered two choices, either an immediate cash reward or a crash reward of more value in a week, 40% of those chose an immediate payout while standing in view of a fast food 
restaurant. These studies blow my mind. I mean, whoever comes up with this and actually does these studies is a genius, right? So they had individuals stand in front of a fast food restaurant. So that's what I spoke about before, about you're already getting the dopamine cues, you're already getting the salivation, you're already wanting the gratification, instant gratification by having that burger, by having those chips or so forth, that soda, right? So these individuals chose that instant cash instead of waiting a week and getting more cash right, when they were in front of this fast food restaurant. So this kind of shows to us what this fast food is actually doing to our brain. It is changing our brain circuit with us, without us even knowing, right? So the thing is, is do you want to be in control of your brain or do you want these fine fast food restaurants to be in control of your brain? Because if you're in taking this fast food on a regular basis, you're actually not in control of your brain. These fine food fast food restaurants are rewiring your motherboard in your brain, making it suit them, making it suit their sales, making it suit their business. So the shareholders there, you know, the business individuals are like, <laughs> yes, 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 let's play with your brain. Let's get that dopamine rush in your brain so you keep buying from us. But what I want to tell you is, is if you don't want depression, if you don't want anxiety, if you don't want Parkinson's disease, Alzheimer's, dementia, you know, um, fatigue, not being able to, memory issues, right? If you don't want any of that, I mean, stay away from these fast foods as much as you can or know that know what is happening to your brain when you are having it so then you are able to take control of your brain and you're able to um, place new circuits in your brain to ensure that you know you switch it around and you go wow this home cooked meal you sit down you have this home cooked meal and you go wow this home cooked meal is adding nutrients to my body it's allowing it to function the way it's supposed to be functioning this protein this fat these carbohydrates these minerals this vitamin are allowing my body to process the way it's supposed to process our body is such a complex complex organ it's such a complex being it's such a complex system right that it needs so many minerals and vitamins for it to function at an optimal level right so this so you change your brain and you go this home cooked meal is allowing it to function the way it's supposed to function right so it's it's so interesting with all these studies like i said what it does to our brain and we may actually have little or no control over it but what i'm saying is take that control back and get in tr control of your brain your system so you're able to get the most out of this right if that is in your business if that is in your career or in your personal life so let's get into it. Three tips how to avoid fast food affecting your brain. Brain, 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 right? Our brain is so important. It's so important. It's just, it, it does so many things. Oh my gosh, like I could be here for hours talking about how important our brain is. But I'm going to give you three tips on how you can avoid fast food actually affecting your brain. Number one is plan. I know, boring, right? No one wants to hear this. What, I'm gonna be planning things. I've got so many things to do already. What I'm talking about is plan, plan, plan. Plan when you're going, right? So let's say, for example, you're working where you don't have access to food. Plan ahead, right? So what I mean by that is if you want, if you can, pre-cook your food, make it the night before, make your food, pack it and take it with you. If you can't do that, nearby find a restaurant get in touch with them ask them if they use preservatives coloring flavoring is their food fresh what do they make out of it so forth and then call up and say hey i'm working there monday to friday at 1 p.m can you please deliver this 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 because then if you get that delivered there's less chance of you going out being like you know what i'll just go to that restaurant i'll just go to that restaurant i'll just get chips or i'll just get you know uh, whatever ordered into the office so that's what I mean by plan. So if you are the type of person who has time, go shopping and prepare your own food or not, you need to do some research. Get researching on what food around the area you're able to eat and not, you know, what food around the area is going to feed your soul, your body, this whole system, right? That was number one. Number two is pack. What I mean by that is, right? So that kind of goes in line with plan. My car <laughs> has little stashes of healthy snacks has nuts seeds sometimes fruit and so uh, some you know so forth those things in there 
protein bars and so forth. So then if I get hungry and I'm out, I can just go and grab my healthy snacks that are going to feed my body instead of just pulling through and going through a drive through or pulling through and making a decision based on someone else's input into my brain just because I see something around me, right? That's what I mean by pack. Be prepared in your handbag or whatever you carry around in your suitcase, have those little snack bags, right? Number three is protein, protein, protein. Okay, so it's P, plan pack protein. So protein, what I mean by protein is ensure that your meals are packed with healthy protein. This healthy protein is going to ensure that your blood sugar level doesn't go up and down, that it maintains the blood sugar level the way it's supposed to be in range, right? And by maintaining the blood sugar level in range, there's a less chance of you being interrupted by those advertisings out there and making a decision that your body will rate later um, not be so thankful for. Okay, so there you have it. Three simple, simple, simple tips on how you can avoid fast food actually attacking your brain, right? Plan, pack, and protein, right? Easy, simple, PPP. Plan, pack, and protein. And if you do that, there's a less chance of them actually controlling your brain. So you so you actually, you know, you get to choose what goes into your body and you get to feed this machine with amazing food and get amazing results out of it. Be more creative, less depression, less anxiety, more uh, focus, more memory span and so forth, right? So there you have it. Please share this episode with anyone that you believe needs to hear about this. It's all about sharing, you know? So the thing is, do what you do best. Love, like, share, comment, rate, review the Natural Health Podcast because with your health, I'll be able to get more of these videos out there, get this message out there to as many people as possible. But now that you know this information, go ahead. Next time you're sitting out and at a party or you know, you're talking to someone, tell them this information. Get the message across out there because now you are knowledgeable, your health knowledge um, has just expanded, right? And you'll keep expanding if you keep listening to the Natural Health Podcast, right? Until next Monday, love you.